Yeah. Uh. This is to me. Your toast. Your toast, buddy! Burnt toast. You will know that Native Americans hey. probably make the best ranch you will ever have in your entire existence. Burnt toast. Mm. Yeah, I've been wanted this <laughs> burnt toast. So now, so that burnt toast to join again, this f***ing crowd now? Why am I being so real tonight? Male individuals in the room need to go get native food. Burnt toast. That Indian girl. You're a toast, buddy! Burnt toast, by the way. You're toast, mother. You're toast. Burnt toast. Burnt toasted. I mean, what the f- Where's your videos? She's a huge, huge whore. Ever. Don't stop with the signs. You know what I'm saying? The rules, the general. Or Indian BS, I'm not sure. I'm wearing a tinfoil hat, which I recommend. I'm doing everything in my power to do it! And then you call it and call it the fuck! Hot damn! You're a goddamn I did see Bart Jones in there. Let me be pissed! I don't need therapy! I wouldn't be surprised if cops were racist. Shanty fam for life! This is the kind of fun shit we get to do. What of you two? I literally based it in rain. <laughs> I listened to toast last night. You know, a methodical toast. What's up, guys? Happy Thursday. Oh, that intro. Love in it. Loving it. Especially the the whale song at the end. Fabulous. Hope you guys had a great week. Uh, Welcome. This is going to be probably a kind of a spicier live. Not by me, but Bullhorn Betty had some stuff to say about military veterans and their benefits. Which, I mean, (laughs) shocker, she says one thing at the beginning of the live that she is going to be going to meetings in her county to advocate, quote unquote, her version of advocate for veterans and veterans uh, to make sure they have the services they need, et cetera. And then by the halfway into the live and basically the entire rest of the live, she's shitting on them. I know (laughs) it's so weird. It's like she never does that. Right. So we're going to go over that because I got some stuff to say and it's probably going to make y'all mad because when I first listened to it, I was like, how dare you? You dumb bitch. You have never served this country. You do not come from a military family. And it's just like, who the fuck do you think you are to say the stuff that you're saying right now? Like, it's so fucked up. And then to say it to the father or the family, it's actually the mother and the stepfather in a child's missing person case. I just, like, there's no boundaries with this person whatsoever. So we're going to look at her and we're going to watch her in her own words and then we're going to have a conversation about it. Uh, Is she mad that she doesn't get the shitty benefits and have to rely on the shitty VA? I don't know. (laughs) But that that is a whole other Dr. Phil show right there, what you just said. Yeah, and that's 100% true as well. It is pretty shitty. But um, for those that live in her area, just be aware that she's going to, this sounds like a, a new grift or a new way to social climb or kiss some ass. 
by because she said that she's now going to be advocating for the vets. First, it was for the children. Now it's for the vets. And if you want to know what she actually thinks about you and your loved ones who've served this country, uh, we're going to play her and you will get to hear her in her own words what she actually thinks about veterans. Um, before we do that, I have a short two minute clip. It's from Savage Live Media's channel. And she clipped Duty Ron and another gentleman called Ed Wallace, who's a retired NYPD first grade detective slash CSI. And I thought it was like the clip, I already put it on my community tab post, but I also wanted to play it in the stream because I thought it was really important to hear what actual professionals think of people like Betty. So she likes to paint this narrative, this picture that somehow it's only the quote unquote haters on the internet that do not like her, that we're just the crazy ones. We're the crazy ones. And she's really not that bad. And this is showing you what two professionals in professions that have to deal with crimes and solving cases and missing person cases. And you get to hear what they actually think about people like her. And it is, it's fabulous. <laughs> they even mentioned bullhorns. And I'm like, I see what you did. I see what you did there, Ed Wallace. Um, blank screen member for 14 months. Thank you so much. Why is them BHB simps can't see what she says? Um, I honestly, to be honest with you, I think that a lot of them do. And the reason why they don't do anything about it or they don't leave it's because she's saying the things out loud that they're thinking to themselves privately. So with that said, they can keep their asses over there because I don't want people like that in my chat. The people that are going to condone her behavior and think that that's okay to treat families that way. Uh, hard pass. Uh, J Deb, I'm for 28 months. A night with BT is a great night. I am here for it. Thank you. I really appreciate that. And earlier... I, I missed it, but I think there were two, I think it was little Irish girl and somebody else. Thank you so much for becoming a member. I, I really appreciate that. Okay. So this is what duty Ron had to say. And he asked, um, Ed Wallace, who's also retired NYPD, what he thinks about people who try to insert themselves into cases and the harm that it can do. About what, we he keep seeing it's a reoccurring problem. Hey, what's up, life? People from TikTok and Facebook and YouTube going and showing up to these situations and sticking cameras in searcher spaces and getting involved and trying to get their what do you want to call it? Uh, notoriety on I, I was here first. That stuff doesn't always work out well. And you had a press conference yesterday and they took out a big portion of that press conference to address that problem. I want to hear it from the voice of reason. Ed Wallace, your thoughts on that. Everyone remember to send Judy Ron some positive thoughts and prayers for his healing. He just had major shoulder surgery last week. Wow. I'm sorry. I'm, I hope that he heals um, quickly on all the places that he's supposed to be healing. Yeah, that's um, that's tough. I'm sorry to hear that, but I hope that it's for a good thing. And I hope that he heals quickly. Hey, what's up? Mistaken Reaper. Hey, um, life rewinded. How you doing? Bagaloon like behavior. No. Yes, Gray One. Thank you so much. If you could drop Duty Ron's link in the chat, that'd be great. The second, like as always, the second that the stream is over, I'll be putting a link to his channel and this stream if I can find it. The link to Savage Live Media, the clip that she clipped, and any other um, things that we're going to look at tonight, the links will be in the description for you to watch yourself. Please give Duty Ron and Savage the likes and uh, views and all that for the, the stuff that we're going to play tonight. I, I get your enthusiasm for true crime, uh, but you have to understand what you're doing is hurting, not helping. Anytime you inject yourself into this investigation and you travel great distances from where you live to these scenes yeah. and um, start doing these things, again, now you're taking valuable resources away from the investigation uh, to deal with you. Exactly. It's, it's incredibly selfish and short-sighted. 
and, and to deal with your issues, okay? If you're not part of an organized group that has been asked to come and assist by law enforcement, stay away. Stand down. Yeah. That's right. Y'all hear that? <laughs> so unless you are with an organization and you're going to be under their umbrella, you're going to follow instructions on what they tell you you can and cannot do, then don't show up. You're only going to make things worse. If you want to be part of the search, fantastic. Find out what organizations that are working with law enforcement are doing the searches and go there and do what they tell you to do. Don't be live streaming it. Don't show up to try to make money off of it. Exactly, Delegato. But they got to make some money. And it's all about the money. It's about the views and the attention. And for Betty, it's more than just the money. For Betty, in my opinion, it's about the notoriety. It's about, I win. I won. I have it first. I saw it first. I solved this case. She wants some kind of perceived glory and bragging rights that somehow something that she did solved the crime. It's not going to happen. Stay, stay away. It's just that simple, folks. Okay, you may have the best heart and intention. Then if that's the case, then join an organized search group that does this. All right, volunteer for an organized search group like EquiSearch if you want to do something like that. But if you're one of these other um, YouTube true crime people. Uh, listen up, Betty, Andra. That make a habit of traveling across the country from these high profile cases and bringing your, um, uh, your entourage or your bullhorn or whatever <laughs> it is that you do. And, you know, you, you start making noise and causing problems <laughs> and harassing um, people or harassing potential suspects. You, you're not helping. You're nah, you're not helping at all, Betty. Uh, Yami Jackie, thank you so much. Toasty Pop Tart, you're asking for too much. <laughs> yeah, well, you know what? Eventually, what's going to start happening is that it's getting it's going to get to the point where the police are going to just start arresting people. I mean, we saw that with Quentin Simon's case. The police had to come out and start arresting people before it calmed the fuck down. So it's like, you know, if that's what needs to happen, then so be it. There's just no reason why you can't hook up with an actual search and rescue organization. Um, they make it very easy. You go there, you sign up, and you follow instructions. Boom. It's, it's not that difficult. So if you're going to go by yourself and make a spectacle of this, I hope you get arrested. And that goes for Dolly and JLR and Betty and whoever the fuck else goes down there. Y'all should be a fucking shame of yourself. You're only hurting. Yeah. Somebody in the chat said they should be arrested. Well, you know, it's happened. We saw it in uh, the Quentin Simonson case. There you go. We saw one of the YouTube folks get, get locked up for assaulting another person that was videoing outside the house. It's just disgusting. These people are just despicable behavior. And we're not going to, you know, here condone that kind of stuff. And we're not going to give them a, a mention or a part of this platform. But we're going to tell you, if you're a true crime enthusiast, don't go and cheer on those assholes that are doing that. You know, it's it's bullshit. Yep. It's exactly. Um, she can't because she's always has to be the boss. I mean, exactly. She doesn't want to have to follow instructions. She doesn't want to have to deal with fo like following somebody else because in her mind, if you have to follow instructions or um, follow someone else as the leader, she that's not good enough for her. She's got to be the top dog. She's got to be in control. And it's ridiculous. Um, yeah, the shade is real <laughs> for real. Like that he was calling all of them out. So I appreciate when people like uh, those gentlemen say those things because it just shows that it's not just some random piece of bread on the internet that has an opinion that says exactly what they just said. It actually is coming from real professionals as well as just ordinary people who have a YouTube channel. Um, you should get a, you should get cert qualified in order to do search and rescue and disaster response. Yeah. Um, in this particular case, there is a, they're asking for the public to help, but they have it under the umbrella of an organized organization. 
So yeah. Um, hey, what's up, uh, Heather B. Beachy? How are you? Betty, so mad that Olivia was on? Probably. Probably. What the fuck is she going to do to Tennessee for anyway, just to get in the way? All she's going to do is stream from a hotel and bitch nonstop. Well, you know what? I hope she keeps her ass in the hotel. I mean, at least she won't be hindering an investigation. Hey, what's up, Peaches? How are you? Cool. Okay, so now we're going to move on to this April 3rd stream that she did. This is from yesterday. Uh, it was, it's fucked. I'm just warning you now, if you are a veteran or if you are, have veterans in your family or you're close friends with, or you're married to or whatever veterans, um, she is going to absolutely piss you off. She shits on the military. Um, and she thinks that she's one upping, I guess the stepdad in the case that she's talking about. And really to only makes her look stupid, which, hey, I'm here for it. But just know that when she starts this new grift about how she's for veteran benefits, just know this is what she actually believes. Up early. can't. I, I woke up at 2 o'clock, smiley. I woke up at 2 o'clock, wide awake. I didn't even go to bed until 11. So I'm literally going on three hours. But I'm wide awake, just like you said, and it's like, okay, well, what do I do? If I stay up too long, I'm probably going to end up falling and taking a nap, and then I won't do a live, and then he's going to be pissed off at Bullhorn Betty. No, I, that's, I'm fine with you <laughs> not doing a live, but okay. Uh, the reason why she is saying that because she leaves, before she leaves, is because she wants to be able to live stream, so she's going to get up at the butt crack of dawn so she can do what she wants to do. Yeah, probably. But the police there in this particular situation have been clear that if people show up and start live streaming, they are going to start arresting people. So <laughs> please do. I am so here for that. I don't know what's going on with my sleep. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's the change of times. I wish they would stop the whole. And of course, here's your little dash of stupid. Um, you know, daylight savings crap. Like, I never understood it. <laughs> for people that you not understanding something <gasps> this is my shocked face what that need daylight just have winter hours and summer hours why punish the rest of the people in the country because <laughs> you need summer and winter hours just change the hours who cares if it says nine o'clock instead of eight o'clock <laughs> let people sleep damn it <laughs> yikes okay so this genius has actually talked about this before. She talked about this earlier, not earlier, but I think it was last year when it, you know, fall back, spring forward. So last fall, she also bitched about it for like months. And her plan, her, <laughs> her genius idea. Oh my God, I don't even know if I can say it. <clears throat> okay, so <laughs> her genius idea is to just have each individual business or each individual state, I think she said state, decide whether they're going to have <laughs> daylight savings time or not. And then there's other states that can opt out of it. <laughs> oh, my God. Like, <laughs> she doesn't understand. That's not like you can't. Everybody has to be on the same page or or nobody. Like, you can't have half the states <laughs> um, recognizing it and the other half not. You can't. Because um, there's things like air airlines and people have to go to work at a certain time and closing hours for businesses and all of the other things, all of the things, and time zones and, like, Oh my God, I can't, I cannot. People sleep. Ooh. Danielle, <laughs> we got all the insomniacs up tonight or this morning. And they're like, I can't sleep. I can't sleep either. I've been up since two. I've been up since two. I probably got the bags. To sh well, I, no, I guess the bags aren't too bad. The bags aren't too bad, but. Um, for real yeah. life, right? Um, I'm an advocate for uh, criminal, criminal um, avocation. She's an advocate for criminal avocation. <laughs> Is that a thing? I'm really not sure. You know, the justice system and stuff like that. And one of the things that I do is try, I try to. Actually, AZ is not on daily. So that's really cool. Then maybe she should move there. But if she's going to be in this country, all of the states in this country recognize it. 
fall back, spring forward. So if they do change it, and they may, who knows, it would be a federal thing because all the states in the United States would have to change it at the same time. Like everybody would have to be on the same page. She can't have like, you know, California recognizing it, but Maine not. Like that's not, it's not going to work. Work on programs that get to kids before they get into the system. And I also try to make sure that people, that we're as, as taxpayers aren't paying taxes to house people for stupid stuff. For example, you know, I know we don't like people stealing Snickers. Okay. Okay, I forgot about this. It's just a lot of stupid. It's just so much. My brain was like, no, and I didn't remember it. So this is another uh, one that she has said before. She seems to think that if you steal a Snickers bar, you're going to prison. Not a thing. It's never a thing. Uh, but here, here it is. Okay, but this, this sounds really petty. But I'm not trying to house somebody for five years because they stole Snickers three different times. You see what I'm saying? You're talking about $100,000 per head. You're talking about a candy bar that costs less than $5. So a total crime of $15 gets them $500,000 of, of jail time at the expense of the taxpayers. So, so, right. What she's failing to understand is that last year when she originally gave this bizarre example, it was someone who had committed felonies in the past. And it was like the three strike rule where they lived. They already had like two felonies and they were still on probation. And if they broke the law one more time, they were going back to prison. So it wasn't them stealing the candy bar or the soda or whatever. It wasn't them stealing. It wasn't the actual candy bar itself that put them in prison for another whatever, five to 10 years. It was the fact that they had already been in prison, they had just gotten out and they were told that you cannot break the law. That's part of the terms of their parole. And they were still on parole and they went to a convenience store and they stole some stuff and they went back to prison. And she acts like that it was just some random person who isn't a felon and who wasn't on parole that just stole a candy bar and all of a sudden they go to prison. And that's just not, that's just not what happened. Sorry. I, I it doesn't make sense. I, I'm sorry. I, I don't like it. So, so now we got to figure out what in the heck we're going to do with all our homeless vets, you know, and uh, this. Thank you, Ashley. Uh, welcome to the dumpster fire. I appreciate that. This event's not to discuss the homeless, vet, homeless vets, but it, you know, when we go to these homeless, are these events like veterans events or uh, veterans? Thing? So listen to what she's saying here now. She's acting like a, an advocate for veterans. Okay. And just to be clear, what she says about veterans is in the same stream. Thank you. You kind of, you can't help but to think about, you know, what avocation you need to do to help whatever situation you're, you're, you're looking at or hearing about. And so right now that's going to be my primary concern is making sure that our, our homeless population isn't going to jail because they're homeless. You know, it sounds so stupid, but it's, it's, this is happening all over the country. So, you know, again, if you, this is happening in your community and you don't think people should be going to jail for being broke, um, this might be a time for you to start going to your county meetings and getting involved. So this is what she does. She will take a legitimate thing that has legitimate issues. It is a fact that there are vets that are still waiting you know, waiting for something that they should not have to wait for as far as health care and things like that. We have way too many um, homeless vets. Like the, the whole concept I'm I'm on board with. However, what she does is she will take a legitimate problem that does need legitimate um, change. And she uses it to grift. And that's the part that I'm that I don't like. Just saying. So I, that's, that's it for my diatribe on that. I don't want to bore you guys with the, um, the details, but word game that's, it's just concerning. I don't want people going to jail, you know, especially for being poor. I mean, that's just, something's wrong with that. <laughs> you guys are funny this morning. What is the secret to happiness? Find somebody happy. I don't know. Do you know who I am? Like I, you guys heard about the, the, the sweetie pie and sourpuss, right? That Olivia and I were going to write the kids book and stuff, right? I was the sourpuss of that. If you guys didn't figure that out.
Isn't it interesting that all these lives before this, she talks about how she's super happy, her life is fantastic, and all these people who review her that were the unhappy ones. Okay. <laughs> What's the secret to happiness? <laughs> I don't know. When I can become happy, I'll let you know. <laughs> I Well, I don't think they always happen. We uh, Christy, we have... Yikes. Are you telling me that someone who lives by themselves because nobody can stand to live with her or deal with her and somebody who has not really accomplished anything in life is unhappy with life? Wow. Uh, shocker again. We have um, we have cases all over the country. I don't think it happens in Tennessee. I think there are just some states that their laws are so screwed up where they're, they're, you know, they're not up with today's technology. What do I mean by that? Once upon a time, we didn't, we only had blood typing. We didn't have the forensics that we have this day and age. And therefore. Funny. She's using that channel name as her so-called book title. I mean, right. Very interesting. Hmm. Whenever they were going into these places, and, and doing this, they had to have bodies, they had to have real physical evidence because they didn't have digital evidence. Digital evidence is physical evidence. Oh my God, Betty, it's it's called digital evidence. Because, okay. I'm, I'm, okay, all right, Betty, sure. In my opinion, it's just not like tangible physical evidence. Like, Betty, do you not understand that the reason why they call it digital evidence is because it's, like, from a computer? For fuck's sake. And um, I just really believe that their laws are still outdated. Like, we have so many things where you can use certain things to connect the dots to get convictions. And it seems to me in Tennessee, they don't know how to do that. They don't know how to present a case. Or they're just too chicken shit. Because some people are like, oh, my God, it's too difficult. We're never well, who you, you're never going to get your first case one in the state of Tennessee until you attempt your first case to be one in Tennessee. When you have all these prosecutors, oh, well, we can't prosecute nobody. Nobody. They want a body. Don't tell me what a jury wants. When when people can sit there and have nobody cases all over this country and successfully prosecute them and, and get convictions. Trezell and Jacqueline West, perfect example. She's now bashing T a TN. Yep. Yeah. She's now bashing Tennessee law enforcement. Yeah. That's also, uh, she goes after them pretty hard in this as well. Hey, what's up, certified? Uh, thank you, Yami Jackie. I hear it all the time when I talk to my customers who are vets when I'm scheduling for something. I try to line it with their benefit um, pay date. Yeah. So she doesn't understand any of that. <laughs> um, here's the thing, Betty, though. There are times where you can convict someone without a body, and there are times where you can't. It, it, there's too many variables there for you to paint this big, broad brush and say, well, this case over here did it. Why can't this case over here do it? It's because it's different. It's a different case, and maybe there's different set of circumstances or different a uh, timeline. There's just a difference. No two crimes are the same. So you can't, you just like compare this particular case with a, some other case. Like it doesn't make sense. Also, um, it's really not what you know or what you think you know. It's about what you can prove. And she's not understanding that either. The DA in that particular state may in fact like have a gut feeling that, oh, I think that it's this person and I think this is how they did it, but it doesn't matter what they think. It matters what they can prove in court. So unless they know they're going to be able to prove it well enough to potentially win in court, the DA is not going to prosecute it. But who am I? I'm just a piece of bread on the internet. And this is Bullhorn Betty, who's supposedly a law expert nobody was found their boys were never found never found never found yet they went to jail so why can't tennessee manage to put together cases like that and take it to court and of course you guys know exactly the cases that she's talking about she's talking about summer wells 
And she's talking about some of the other cases that she's um, exploited on her channel for years now. And the thing is, it's like in the Summer Wells case, for example, there's there's no body, but also the police have not ruled it anything that would require the DNA. You, you see what I'm saying? Like, there is nothing. They're, they, they, they are at a standstill. They're still working the case, but they're kind of at a standstill right now because there is nothing. And they keep searching and keep searching, but there's no body, but also there's no evidence that there's foul play. There's also no evidence of other things either. So everything is still on the table. Like people still don't know what happened. And it's very, very sad. But that particular missing person case is completely different than the West case. So again, what she's saying, it's just, it doesn't make any sense. Sometimes, you know, we never want anybody walking. Okay. We never want anybody walking, but you know what the bad part about a uh, trial and error is trial and error. That means there may be a mistake when you're doing a nobody um, case, there may be a mistake that's made. This idea that we're going to wait 20 freaking years so you can have a possibility of pro successfully prosecuting this case. What is the point? Uh, oh my God. I cannot believe I'm having to explain this to someone who claims they have an AA and paralegal studies. I guess you should have gone to an actual accredited school instead of the diploma mill that you chose to go to. But the answer to your question, dummy, is that if they prosecute somebody for a crime and they know they had, don't have the evidence to actually put them away, they walk and then they're not able to charge them again in the future, thus robbing the family of justice. <laughs> it robs the victims of justice, Betty. That's why. What is the point at that point? I just, I, I don't get it. You know, we want people in jail. I, like even Don and Candace. How you guys tell me that those those parents can't be successfully prosecuted on an endangerment or a ne negligent charge? Nothing, nothing, anything related to Summer Wells. Tell me that there's not enough evidence. I looked at their I looked at their laws. They have enough right now to arrest them, and they had enough to arrest them the day that Summer went missing for negligence. They chose not to. And this is a friendly reminder that if you are interested in getting into the weeds and the details of all these cases, don't ask me because <laughs> I'm not a true crime channel. I just happen to be reviewing a little cow that dips her toes in true crime. So I have to like know at least a little bit to debunk the things that she's saying. But there are plenty of actual good true crime channels on this platform that don't say shit like this. They actually provide evidence and court documents and they go over the TBI website and updates and they get their information from law enforcement or from reputable sources and not from your feelings. They chose not to. Didn't the founding father say something, something about innocent people better a hundred guilty go free then one innocent man go to one innocent go to prison, something along those lines. Yeah, it sounds about right. But this is Bullhorn Betty who says that you are guilty until she deems you innocent. Those are her exact words. I'm not angry. I'm never angry. I speak. I speak loud. I speak forceful. I'm, I'm a very direct and a blunt person. I'm just not. Um, people may take that as anger, but I, I tell you what, I'm not an angry person. I don't, um, <laughs> wow. Um, your criminal record would say otherwise. Wow. Okay. I'm not angry people. I'm never angry. Okay. <laughs> okay. Sure. I'll let everybody make up their own mind on that. Uh, BHB is someone who is upset about Casey Anthony going free. They charged her without a body and look what happened. Had they waited two years, they would have had a body. That's very interesting. Yeah. You know, every now and again, bitter, uh, Yeah, maybe bitter, um, <laughs> but not angry when I'm angry, when I'm angry, when I'm truly angry, I'm very quiet. I'm 
like scary quiet like don't talk to me stay like i process when i am in full on like rage like where i feel like i could just blow a gasket i get very very quiet i get very very quiet and want to get away from everybody okay so that's that's bullshit i mean we've seen her scream so loud and so forcefully like so like rage, actual rage and screaming and yelling on her channel to the point where she's over modulating her mic. So I don't believe anything that she's saying right now. And she may get quiet sometimes, but not all the time, because I've seen plenty of times on this platform where she's screaming and yelling into the camera. She's clearly angry. That's, you know, and she's definitely not quiet. She's like the absolute opposite of quiet because i just need to calm down so if i whenever i'm really really angry you you'll never know i'm really angry because i'm <laughs> quiet actually which is kind of weird she's quiet <laughs> i can like does she does she not realize that all these people that have seen these clips of her screaming and yelling does she think that we didn't see those things because usually when people get angry, they start screaming. I've been, I've screamed angry. Like I've been angry where I've screamed. I've raised my voice before. Um, but it's very, it's, 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 well, I shouldn't say it's very few and far between, but. So you just sent simply undid what you just said. Cause I mean, like if you have done it multiple times on camera, God knows how long, how many times that you've done it in real life when the camera's not on. <laughs> usually something that's on your YouTube channel is like a, a small microcosm of like the rest of your day. And wow, Betty. Okay. Uh, remember for 22 months. Thank you so much. Brick with eyes. She gets very quiet just like every night in bed. Hey, Oh, <laughs> um, when I get like full on it, like, like, <laughs> like I'm pissed, pissed. I get really quiet, <laughs> really, really, really quiet. Yeah. We all get mad sometimes. Yeah, Betty is passionate. Oh, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm passionate. Well, and that's that's the other thing is I just don't like the BS. I hate I hate word salad and I hate BS. It's like you know, just give it to you. like I uh, <laughs> word game. She still has not figured out what word salad is, and I love it. Atomic Karen, thank you so much. She doesn't get angry, just better at Karening. Wow, thanks for the correction. Hey, what's up? I, I think that's what it is. Like, I appreciate people being blunt with me and just, you know, like, I, I don't oh. like sugarcoating. I, even with talking to me, like, I'm just like, just say it's boom, 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 boom. I don't like, sh I don't like sugarcoating. I don't like oh. you dancing around. Like, even when my mom, my mom will start telling me. Wait, so it's kind of funny because when other channels who review you are very blunt and speak their mind. They don't sugarcoat things. They don't make a, a nice um, con constructive criticism sandwich to soften the blow. They just say what they got to say. And you not only flip out, but you are currently suing somebody for emotional distress because they hurt your fee-fees. Girl, stop. Something and she's like, well, you know, well, this. I'm like, mom, spit it out. What are you trying to say? <laughs> Like, just say it. Like, quit trying to dance around it. Quit trying to make it better. What is it? Like, just tell me. What is it? You know, so I'm just, uh, I like bluntness. I like, uh, I, I, I treat people as I want to be treated, to be honest with you. Oh, well, I'm so glad the Queen Bee is countersuing you since you want to sue everybody else and threaten to sue a bunch more people um, because you think that you are like the internet police. Love that. I'm so glad that she is suing you just like you're suing her. Love it. Um, her victims get quiet too. They're struggling for air. <laughs> okay, y'all are funny tonight. I'm a very blunt person, so I expect to be treated bluntly. I don't want people to be aggressive, you know, but I want them to be assertive. And people mistaken assertiveness for aggressiveness, which is oh. um, a little crazy. Calm down, Betty. Nighthawk. Good lord. And that's all it took. That one person saying, "Calm down, Betty." Here we go. <laughs> calm down. Calm, how, how much more calm can I be? 
Tell me the truth, even if my feelings, yeah, get hurt. I know. I'm one of those girls who ask me if your your ass looks big in the jeans. And if your ass looks big in the jeans, I'm going to tell you, change your jeans. <laughs> Which is pretty ironic considering she surrounds herself with people that instead of telling her hard truths, they kiss her ass. Worse, they put a battery in her back and say, go, 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 go. And then she deals with the consequences of it. And they're sitting back like laughing. And these are her own mots, her own supporters that cheer her on when she does crazy shit. And now look at her. <laughs> She's got a hearing on the 17th. Can't wait. Yami Jackie, thank you so much. She sure gets very quiet when she stares at toast. <laughs> uh, Cold Case Crystal, thank you so much. When she gets angry, we know it because there's normally a court record attached. Oof. Yep. How accurate is that? Oh my gosh, I can heart your stuff now. Oh, I can heart you guys. I'm sorry I didn't heart the ones before. I'll do them from now on. Thank you so much, guys. Hope for Snoopy. Uh, how about charges for obstruction of justice? Tennessee probably has enough for that. That's oop. Yeah, I mean, that would be pretty fucking hilarious if she goes down there <laughs> and then gets arrested. Oh my God. I honestly, I think that with people like her and it's not just her, like it's, there's a lot of people doing this. They're showing up for views and attention and money and all this shit. I think that eventually until, until people, <clears throat> excuse me, until people start getting arrested and people start getting sued by these families, they're not going to stop. <laughs> you suggest a title change. She blocks you while you change it. I mean, right. Sure as hell wasn't honest with Molly about how the orange sweater, how that orange sweater in Tennessee. <gasps> Haley, I agree. She sh she did Molly dirty. Yep, she should have told her. I'd be like, you know, it's probably not your size. <laughs> Get to the point. Exactly. Exactly. So <clears throat> with Sebastian, can somebody tell me, and I don't know if this is true or not, I know that Seth went on somebody's, because I, I heard this, because we have the, the page and I'm monitoring the page, um, that Seth or Seth's group is the one that um, found the glasses. Can somebody confirm that? Jason, or whatever, I, you just, I see you just, uh, yeah, Jake, Jake, stop. Like, I don't want to, I, you're an adult. <laughs> Act like it, please. I don't want to have to block you. Yeah, guys, how dare you say something she doesn't like? She can't just ignore it and keep it moving. Nope. She's going to stop her entire live stream to bitch about it. You, do, you don't deserve to be blocked by saying Biden 2024, okay? So let's just knock it off. I don't want to have to block you. Um, uh, thank you, Reluctant. It is also, just to be clear, it's not Sebastian's glasses. Uh, she should have been clear about that. I don't think that she was clear until I think today, this was yesterday. And um, yeah, she just, a quick Google search would have told her it's not the glasses. <laughs> no, I'm not a teacher, nor do I uh, aspire to be a teacher. We already got a one crazy teacher on this platform. I think that's enough for, for everybody. So. <laughs> okay, so thank you, Smiley. So he found, he fa his group was the one that found, now can you tell me, did they find the glasses near the school? Because that is what I'm I'm learning is um, that they had that there's possibly the glasses could be a red hair. I know that. That's why I'm trying to find out, um, Justice Jane. That's that's where I'm getting at with all this. Is that yeah, uh, the glasses could be a red herring. But I want I exactly, Michelle. But she researches it. She re researches her cases twenty hours a day. People, she's working her little eyeballs to the bone, right? She says that she researches these things before she goes live for eight to 10 hours a day. She says she'll sometimes work at like two, three o'clock in the morning even. So why is it that she always, like she misspells people's names, doesn't know when their birth date is, doesn't know simple things that would take two seconds to Google, like the stuff that she was, she's going to get into later in this uh, live. She starts talking about 
um, the Sebastian Rogers uh, missing person case. And she starts talking about um, <clears throat> something involving the mom and the stepdad that she's just wrong on. And I was like, hmm, let's see if it's right or not. So I did a like it was literally 30 seconds of Googling and I found a whole slew of articles that debunked what she claims was happening. I know the location. They shouldn't have picked them up and brought them to Seth. They should have. That's the bad thing. That's why I don't like whenever. And this is just and this is for anybody. Whenever you're out there, I always have and we have boxes of um, gloves. I got vinyl gloves here because they were cheaper. I bought gloves. And this is where she talks about how um, when she goes live streaming at searches, it's okay, guys. It's okay because she has gloves. So if she ends up touching a, um, a, a weapon, a crime weapon, if she ends up finding a body, if she ends up finding something like some kind of evidence related to the case, it's a-okay, guys. Calm down. She has rubber gloves, and that makes it all better. Does she have a job? I assume not. Nope. She considers YouTubing her job, which is fine. There are people who do this to pay their bills, uh, but she's just not very good at it. When when we had, like, when it was $14 for a box of gloves. I'm not paying $14 for a box of nitro gloves. So I ended up getting vinyl gloves. They were, like, six or seven bucks. I don't really necessarily like them, but for us being out there, uh, you know, they're, they're, they're barriers. I don't like the fact that people pick up stuff. That's one of the things. And I know it happens. But you do that, Betty, and you have done that in previous cases. There was one particular case. I believe it was a couple of years ago. She ended up touching something and she ended up having to go into the police station to get her DNA tested so they can exclude her from the evidence. And she saw that as like, bragging rights and i'm just like that's not that's not a good thing betty because when we were out there it just it just happens um and and law enforcement can exclude it so don't don't get all bent out of shape and oh my god they're, they're messing with they they can exclude it what they do is they take your they take your um your dna they take your fingerprints and they exclude you that's how they do it i know that because when we when i was doing that um job in pasco when we found that night that like butcher knife thing that we thought because he was a chef we thought it could be associated with there you go she's i mean like this is this is the kind of mentality that we're dealing with here with it but it was something shiny and i just i didn't know what it was and so when we were searching it just caught my eye and you naturally grab it and pick it up so that's why i always say you know you should try to wear gloves when you're out there do not touch things call law enforcement if you're out searching and you see something that may be evidence, don't touch it. I don't care if you have gloves on that cost a thousand dollars a pair. <clears throat> don't touch it. Just don't. Just don't let anybody touch it. Don't let anybody like, like just stay away. Call law enforcement. Have them do their thing. Have the professionals pick up the evidence because if it ends up having to be something really, really important. You want it done correctly from start to finish so that the defense doesn't have a chance to pick it apart later in the trial. Again, everything that she's talking about could jeopardize justice for the family later. So when something like that happens, you'll still have it. But it, again, they can exclude you. They, I know people are like, you know, evidence and blah, 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 blah. Yeah, that blah, 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 blah is like very important to families who are trying to seek justice for their families. So fuck you for saying that it's blah, 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 because it's not. Uh, it, yes, it's not the best situation. They would like to see where it's at in its format. And actually, one of the reasons why I film, too, because uh, the law enforcement was able to allow me, you know, they, they had me send the film over to them. So they were able to go there. Okay. That, that then we're going to go ahead and um, how do I, why can't I remove? And exactly. It does cost a lot of time and money that she's wasting. Miss, I don't like my government entities wasting taxpayer money Bitch, what do you think that they're doing when they're having to deal with somebody like you constantly?
Do you think that that's all free? <laughs> oh, there we go. We'll time you out for 24 hours. There you go. You can come back tomorrow, Jake. Hi to everybody this morning because I'm on this phone and it's harder to read. So we do have some trolls in here this morning. It's, you know, good morning to you trolls. I wish you guys would find some better things to inspire yourself and be be happier. That's what I really yeah, like. The glasses were um, I just, I just a small point, like how narcissistic you have to be to think that when people watch you, they're watching you because they're looking for inspiration. Girl, stop. And it's, it, you know, there's a lot of behaviors that are equated to that. You know, would I, even with all the information as it is right now, would I feel the way I feel right now if I actually saw uh, Chris and Katie? Lee? Okay, this is where we're going to get into her uh, vet bashing and, um, you know, talking about vet benefits. She doesn't know what the fuck she's talking about. So I'm, I'm just letting you know, it's, it's pretty infuriating when you, you know, really listen to her. And, um, but before we get into that, I want to show you the actual article so you know the truth before she starts bitching. Because what she essentially did here is she heard a rumor, you know, from the lovely chat that she likes. She heard a rumor, and instead of actually researching it before, uh, like freaking out over it, she ran with the rumor, and it ends up being not true. And so the actual article and i'll get you the website um here in a second but this is part of the actual article this is from march 28th 2024 so fairly recently um she uh, the the just of is is that betty claims that the parents are selling their house moving out and they're just leaving and they don't care about their missing son and this article is entitled Sebastian Rogers' Mother Explains Why She Left Family Home Amid Frantic Search for Missing Son. This is what it says. Mother, the mother of missing Tennessee teen Sebastian Rogers says she plans to return home, but for now she's hours away with her husband as the search continues. Keddy Proudfoot says she met up with her husband and Sebastian's stepfather, Chris Proudfoot, over three hours from their Sumner, Sumter County home. Chris previously told crime stories that he works on a construction project in Memphis and planned to return to work. While speaking to Fox News Digital, Katie said that she continues to post flyers everywhere in search of Sebastian, which is something else that Betty was spreading a misinformation about. She was claiming that Katie was somehow like this was like them going on vacation or they're just gallivanting the countryside and that she didn't give a fuck. Well, um, Chris has got to work. And so Katie decided to go with him. And now she is posting flyers everywhere while Chris is working. Um, it says she left her home where she lives with Sebastian and her husband after allegedly getting threatened by the public. So what was happening was they were getting, uh, they were getting death threats. Okay. And so she didn't want to be by herself. So, if you want to criticize that, then go ahead and criticize it. I don't have a dog in this fight. But criticize what actually happened, not the bullshit that Betty is spreading. That is my point in this. The last part says, we are posting flyers every direction we can. But at the same time, there are quite a bit of people that were sending some very threatening and hateful messages to us. They're following us. They've driven, they're driving past our house at all hours of the day or night, disturbing the neighborhood, and the neighborhood is very upset and concerned. They're worried about their safety at this point, she says. So, again, if you disagree, fine, great, speak about it. But at least speak about what's actually happening and not lies and misinformation that Betty is spreading about the case. So... You give me two seconds, I will put the link to this article. Let me grab that in the chat. It will also be in the description um, the second that this stream is over. So that is the article. Again, that was from just recently, just like last week. Um, hey, what's up, Jules? Remember for 31 months, Toasty bought me subs. Thanks, Toasty, and you're welcome. <laughs> Watch them clip that. Shit's hilarious. Okay, so again, this is going to make y'all mad. Literally turning over every stone to find their son. I probably would keep my suspicions to myself. You know what I'm saying? 
Um, but because they're being so damn blatant about it, 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 it's almost sickening. Like, how dare you tell me that you're a Navy and you can't even go out there and search for your missing son, but you can take an hour to go visit with family at Cracker Barrel and you can take hours to go to a, a, a barbecue uh, place to eat. So this is this is when my ears started to perk up because I'm like, well, like, what does him serving in the Navy or used to like he used to serve in the Navy? What does him being a military veteran have anything to do with any of this? Because it doesn't. And you're right. Um, who said that? Let me see if I can find it. Um, people need to look for the teen and leave the parents alone. Let Ellie do their job. Thank you. Well said. I agree. I have no idea if the parents or step parents or anybody else had anything to do with it. Nobody knows. All I do know are the facts. And that is Ellie is saying that the mom, the dad and the stepdad are fully cooperating. They're not suspects and they're not persons of interest. In fact, as of right now, as of today was April 4th, 2024, there isn't even evidence of foul play. Will there be in the future? Maybe. Will it end up being somebody in the family? Who knows? But until there's evidence of it, for her to act like the blaming the family thing should be the focus is crazy to me. I, I just wondering, Katie and Chris, is this this your idea? I mean, is this what you guys have been wanting? Just to be by yourselves? No kids? No nothing? Was this your idea? Was he was he too much of a problem for you? Was he causing problems in your marriage? Katie, did you sell your son's soul out? Y'all see what I'm talking about? Why is this her focus instead of finding the teen? If you're wondering... I can tell you the answer. It's because this is fear porn. This is her, you know, stirring her audience of crazy people into a frenzy. So they throw money at her and then she gets to go down there and scream through a bullhorn. Because uh, heads up, Tennessee, she is planning on going down there this weekend. So I hope that she ends up staying in her hotel bitching. That would be ideal. Um. Slevin, thank you so much. I appreciate that. Friday almost here. Everybody have a good weekend. Thank you. You too. Well, yeah, she's very Val. Yeah. Not even suspects. Uh, law enforcement is wrong until the family proves to mom battering Betty that they aren't innocent. <laughs> yeah, like I'm like again, I'm I don't do true crime, okay? I don't even watch <laughs> true crime, but I have to say like until there's actual evidence I'm just, I'm sorry. I'm just going to take a wait and see approach. I think that the focus should be on trying to find Sebastian. Let the other stuff happen. The chips fall where they may. But right now, people need to look for that child and not scream about the parents. Thank you, Jules Tells All. Betty, the judge and lawyer is going to love this. Oop. Hmm. Maybe. Did you choose a man over your own kid? I mean, I'm curious. I'd like to know. Chris asked us to take Sebastian so they could take care of them. Yeah, I know. He wanted, they were having marital problems. So it's kicked the kid out. It just shows you the kind of person Chris Proudfoot is. So again, don't like a lot of the stuff that she's saying is all opinions. It's all bullshit from her chat. Who's, you know, they're, putting a battery in her back right now. He's been married five times, but he literally thinks it's the child that's causing his marital problems. Is he a fucking idiot? Excuse my language. Chris, trust me, babe. It ain't everybody else. It's not all the women in your life. You know what it is? Your problem is you. And no matter where you go, you'll never be able to run away from yourself. Uh, Betty, um, you are also divorced. In fact, uh, he married you and left you um, not that long after that. So you are not in the place to be calling somebody else a piece of shit because they got divorced. Again, 
don't know Chris, don't give a fuck. But like she's overstepping here. She's getting way too overly emotional. And I think that a lot of it is she can't control her impulses. And I think the other half of it is that she doesn't give a fuck to control her impulses because she knows this is going to make her money. This is going to get her views. Five marriages. Absolutely. But hey, it's it's Sebastian's fault why his marriage is falling apart. Couldn't possibly be him. I mean, he's just the stellar guy that he's so awesome that even law enforcement thinks his his timeline related to this is so top secret. Can't let the can't let the public know. Right. So I haven't read any articles about Katie and Chris's marriage falling apart. Like, I'm sorry, I there's no evidence of that whatsoever. I'm not sure why she's saying that. Can you please delete the, uh, oh, is there a comment in here like that? Did I miss it? Yeah, okay, wow. Yeah, um, we're not going to accuse family of, of that. Um, no, no, we're not going to do that in my chat. Thank you. It might alter. And I will have to say to that person, if you have evidence, then you need to go to the police. If not, you're either obstructing justice or you're a liar. I bet it would alter the, uh, the, the direction of this case. Quite so. <laughs> I bet you it would. Kate, I think Chris was wondering eyes. Yeah, he, of course he has wondering eyes. A guy, five freaking wives. Trust me, that's he's he's got temperament issues. He's got bedroom issues. He's got a whole host of issues. Yikes. I think it's the stepdad, but see, this is my problem. I, like I see Chris as being one of those, those kind of men that would, would not, they don't want any witnesses. He's military. Oh, okay. Here we go. Carry trained. He knows how important it is not to have witnesses. Really? So because you're in the military, that makes you essentially a psychopath or an sociopath? Uh, what? And he was on the phone with Katie for three hours that night. Could that have been intentional? Could he have done that so he knew exactly when she was going to be going to bed? Could he have done that so he knew, because he's been with his wife for many years, he knows her sleeping patterns. Could he have gotten off the phone with her and been waiting for the two hour mark to hit so he could sneak in the house and take Sebastian out undetected by his mom? Could he be that kind of monster where he's sitting right next to his wife, holding her hand and, and letting her wow. cry on his shoulder? Meanwhile, he has this secret that he snuck in the house and took her kid out. I just have to say, one of these days, one of these families are gonna sue her for all the slander that she has said, not just in this case, but all these other cases, because she has done this over and over and over again. And one of these days, I really hope one of these families sue the fuck out of you, Betty. And I'll review it and laugh at you. Again. You know what, Katie? Mm. You know, I really try. I try really hard. I wake up each and every day and I say, you know, how can we make this world a little bit better, right? What can we do to make this world a little bit better? We go to our meetings. I deal with a shit ton of garbage on these platforms just to advocate for these cases. You uh, so this is advocation? Is this your definition of advocation? Pretty sure it's not the actual definition. You know... And what really, really, really gets me out of all of this that just makes me want to work 10 times harder and, and 100 times better is the fact when I hear mothers running away from their disabled children that are missing. Katie, if I haven't told you this yet, like you are on the top of my biggest piece of shit mother's award list. Like you are there in first position, babe. Like first position, like your kind of garbage, your kind of trash. I got some, I, I have some choice. I, you know what? I hope to God I do not, 
I hope to God if I see the, that Chris and Katie, I pray to God they're searching. Uh, so a veiled threat. Um, Betty, quick question. <laughs> Don't hurt your brain too hard answering this. Um, how does that kind of nonsense, that rhetoric, how does that help Sebastian? It doesn't. How does it help find him? It doesn't. Like, how does it help at all? It doesn't. So now you are joining the other fucktards that are, like, threatening their life now, threatening physical harm. Is that what we're going to do right now, Betty? Okay. All right. I pray to God they're out there searching. I'll leave them alone. Won't say shit to them. And what happens if you see them and they're not? What you're going to do, Betty? Seriously. I'm telling you, one of these days, you're going to have to deal with the consequences of, of being reckless like this. But... If I find out they're freaking in Mississippi while we have hundreds of people out there in the woods searching for their son, mm, I don't know. So again, they're not in Mississippi. I don't know where the fuck she's getting this from. It is false. <clears throat> like I said in that article, Chris had a construction job for a couple of weeks in Memphis, three hours away. And Katie said in the article that instead of being home by herself, after she was getting threats and people driving by the house at all hours of the night, she decided to go with him and pass out flyers. Agree or disagree with that, but those are the facts. Uh, what she's saying is not true. I don't know. I may have to call Mississippi law enforcement to let them know I'm coming into town. I don't know. I don't know. I think it would probably be wise and best for Katie to go home but you know what? Chris won't allow her to because then she'll be alone. She'll be away from his abuse. He's controlling her. I don't know. I don't like Chris. I don't like Chris. I'd like Chris to come and, and talk to me and treat me the way he treated Nina. And, and, and Chris, I'm just a little five foot nothing girl. I'm nothing. Ah, uh, you're bigger than nothing. Not saying a joke. Hitting play right now. But I'd love you to Trump come and talk to me or treat me the way you <laughs> treated her. Love it. I think they had financial problems. I think they're pieces of shit. And you know what? And it just, it just, this just emboldens our position. You ran away from home. You left your son behind and you're selling his house. Also not true. You don't, you know, you never thought he was coming home. Did you? You knew he wasn't coming back. These assholes knew he wasn't coming back. I hope they fucking rot in hell. Excuse my language, but I do. I hope Chris Proudfoot and Katie Proudfoot rot in a cold, cold hell. That's what I hope. Because you're not going to convince me this is a mother that loves her kid. Oh, wow. That's a lot. Yeah, I know, right? Betty has financial problems, for real. Right, and I maybe I missed it, but I missed the article where it said that Katie and Chris are having financial problems, so they had to sell their house. None of that is true that I've been able to find. She makes these threats while trying to get an order protection against me. LMAO, yes, ma'am, queen. And if you want this clip, I will send it to you. This is from April 3rd. I know it's hard to tell because she's wearing the same damn shirt three days in a row, but this is from April 3rd. And yeah, that was definitely threats. While she's about to go to a hearing <laughs> on the 17th, where she claims she needs the protective order. Betty, this is why you should probably hire a licensed attorney to represent you who's knowledgeable and well-versed in the laws of Illinois. Katie, you are the biggest disgusting piece of... You know what we need to do? We need to be um, advocating to have their, whatever they're getting military-wise, pulled. I want them not to have any... And here we go. Any of their military benefits, I, I want it all stripped from them. Oh. Like, I literally want it all stripped from them. They do not deserve it. Okay. Um, wow. So, uh, a couple of things. 
Betty. Military benefits for veterans are benefits they've already fucking earned. It is not welfare. It is not a gift. It is the government's side of a contract. Those benefits come from the government. You fucking moron. And I know you don't understand because, you know, well, why the fuck would, would you care, right? But, like, what you're saying here, it just it's fucking asinine. Someone signs up and literally is giving their body over to the government to be used to serve this country. And in return, when they are done with their service, they get benefits like a VA check if they end up being uh, disabled, according to the VA. Then they get that check every month. If they've earned enough to get a GI bill, then they'll get a GI bill and get their college paid for. They fucking earn that. That's what they earned, Betty. So the person, their side of the contract is they serve their time. They, did, they choose self-sacrifice, unlike you, who chooses self-indulgence and self-serving every day. And then the government side of the contract, when that person is done with their service, or sometimes during their service, they can use GI Bill to get a degree. They can use um, VA to get free medical. It's called TRICARE if you're in the military. And then after they get out of the military, if they're disabled, according to the VA, there's different percentages. They get a check every month. That's not welfare. That's something they've already fucking earned, Betty. Something you don't know anything about. If they decide to get a VA loan, then that is something they've already earned. That is not like something that can ever be taken away from them because they've already earned it. It would be like, I know it's crazy, Betty. It's hard to imagine you going to a job and clocking in and working 40 hours a week. And then at the end of the week, your boss saying, you know, I'm just not going to pay you because I don't like what you said yesterday. I'm not going to give you your paycheck because I don't like what you wore last week. They can't do that because regardless of how they feel about you now, even if they decide to fire you the following week, they still have to pay you for what the fuck you've already earned, which is why you can sue them and get, get your money if they don't pay you. And as far as our military, like, our military is made up of volunteers. It is not a draft. So, you know, the government gives them an incentive to sign up. And so you can get bonuses. You can get, uh, you. Uh, they offer you GI Bill, which again, which gives you free education, uh, VA loans later after you get out or even when you're in. Um, there's all kinds of benefits that you can get if you're in. And then afterwards, you can sometimes get a VA check if VA decides that you are disabled in a particular percentage or whatever. But for you to sit up here and not only attack a victim's family, but then also attack their military service, which your bitch ass is too lazy to do yourself, is bullshit. Again, who knows if the mom and stepdad had anything to do with what happened. That is a completely different conversation. And if they did have something to do with it, then guess what? Law enforcement will find out. It will be presented at a court of law and a judge will make his fucking decision. It will be worked out in the court. But that has nothing to do with their military service. Give you another example. There's a channel of two morons on this platform. Let's call them Sin Cell and Butt Cake, shall we? Shout out to JP and her chat earlier today. 
for that, uh, those, those names. Okay. So sin cell and butt cake are fucking morons. They're absolute pieces of shit. They're liars. They abuse the copyright system on this platform. They're like minor lol cows themselves. Okay. Sin cell served this country in the Marines, even though he's an absolute piece of shit. He's a liar and abuses the copyright system. He still served this country. He can still be called out, which he will be. However, I would never in a million years say that he shouldn't get his VA check if he gets one. And I would never <clears throat> in a million years say that he shouldn't get a GI bill if he decides to get one. I would never in a million years say that he should have his VA stripped from him if he used one or say that he shouldn't be able to have access to that in the future if he decides to use it because that shit has nothing to do with his bitch ass behavior right now on the internet. You see how that works, Betty? Somebody can be a man child and a pussy ass thin skinned bitch also deserve his VA check. So now we got that out of the way. Uh, she's going to say some more shit. <laughs> And it's, it's stupid. It's just, it's a lot of ignorance. Maybe they should get a TRO against her. That is on them. But yeah, if, if, if I had some crazy Karen like this threatening to like show up where I lived. Yeah, I would do, I would do something. Exactly. Exactly. Kath, those, that, uh, Katie and Chris Proudfoot, no matter how much you don't like them, Betty, they serve this country to protect your big fucking mouth so that you can get up here and say some shit. But don't get it twisted. You have the right to say some shit, but you have to deal with the consequences of what the fuck you say. Your rights are not absolute. Something else you should also look up, Betty, Andra. And it's sickening that you're going to be like, Oh, I'm going to get involved in my community to be an advocate for vets. And here you are saying that vets should have their benefits stripped from them because you've decided that they're guilty. Really? Okay. I hope people in your area see this because you should be ashamed of yourself. Thank you. Happy life. Amen. Toasty. Thank you. I appreciate that. I hope I didn't miss anyone. Oh, pro Charlotte Luke. Thank you so much. Sounds like BHB is jealous of military benefits. Hmm. I bet she is. Guess what, Betty? Uh, you don't have to be jelly girl. Just sign on that dotted line. I like to see you do half the shit that Katie and Chris probably did. Oh, but it gets worse guys. Oh, it's much worse. She's not done. Uh, Tom at Karen, thank you so much. We at Karen and Karen do indeed have muzzles. Wow, that is good to know. I would like to order one for Miss Andra here. <laughs> uh, Wanderlust, thank you so much. Uh, hey, Toasty, this woman is a POS. My son proudly served his country in the army, and this is highly offensive. Offensive. Much love to you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you, Comfort All. Yeah, like she she had no business. You want to say you don't like him? Great, fine. Do a five-hour live saying that you don't like Chris Proudfoot. Don't give a fuck. But you're not going to sit up here and shit on military veterans, bitch, and say that they should have their benefits stripped from them over something that you don't even have evidence of. They do not deserve it at all. They, 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 they should not be receiving one freaking benefit courtesy of our taxpayer money. Not one. I bet they were. So they were down the road from Chris's mom and stepdad's house. Seems awfully freaking convenient. What did they, they accidentally drop them when they were taking the, taking the garbage out? Did anybody check the, the grandmother's landfill? Okay, we're going to do that. How about we check your landfill, Betty? What you got hiding? Because that's how stupid you sound right now. The police have already searched all of that. The mom, the dad, and the stepdad are fully cooperating with law enforcement. 
None of these people are suspects. There's not even evidence to any of the things that you're saying right now. And even if there was, it's not an excuse to say that they should have their veteran benefits taken from them. Two separate things, moron. Uh, Betty's second box of wine for sticking it to E. Beggity Betty on the regular. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. Um, yet it is, it's been rumored she gets government benefits. Yeah, I've heard of multiple people tell me that they think that she gets like welfare. I don't know if it's true or not. I frankly don't care, but I do think that if it does come out that she is getting welfare and she's sitting here shitting on other people that get disability checks when they've actually fucking earned them, eh, that's rich, Betty. Does Betty even pay taxes? She's permanently unemployed. I don't know. She should be paying taxes on that YouTube money, though, Betty. You got to pay taxes on those donation links, too. Hope you're doing that. <laughs> you don't look for something. You know where it is. Exactly. Exactly. What a freaking piece of shit. Well, you know what, Katie? At this point, don't even bother coming and looking for your son. We got it. You, you just stay where you're at. And you better hope to God you don't fucking see me because I'm going to tell you what I'm going to tell you all about yourself. And another threat. Wow. Um, probably not smart. Like openly, publicly, physically threatening people who have done nothing to you, Betty. They've never even spoken to you, according to you. You're like threatening people. <laughs> When you're about to go into a hearing where you're begging for a protective order, mm, something tells me that's not going to end well for you. And I will make sure it's public. I will make sure you know exactly where I'm coming from. I would hope that you get off your ass, take your ass back home and start looking for your son. But if you don't want to and you need to be called out and need to be embarrassed, I'm the person that, that can be, they can do that for you. And there is not a damn thing anybody's going to be able to do to me. The worst thing that's going to happen to me is somebody throws me in jail. Oh, well. Cakewalk. Cakewalk. Like I said, Chris, I'd like to see you too. Talk to me like Nina. Wow. Uh, Katie, thank you so much. Thanks for this live. Thank you. I appreciate you. I, and I, I thank you for your service as well. She sounds very brave, doesn't she? Threatening to assault a person she believes is a murderer, right? Crazy, right? Yeah, we're going to be out there too, Leslie. I'm going to be getting out there. I just, I, I'm angry with Chris and Katie. I'm angry with them. And the reason why they ran away is because their whole community knows. That's what it is. Their whole community knows. Everybody's looking at them awfully. Everybody is, is monitoring their movements. Their, their, their neighbors are monitoring their movements. The people in the community are monitoring their movements. Betty, I'm going to let you know right now, you don't speak for that community. <laughs> uh, people from that community have come onto social media, and they're saying, do not speak for us. I'm just saying, you ought to be careful. Um, Betty made all of, all of this about her and not about the missing teen, Sebastian, and this is sad. Yes, this is what she does. It's all about her. And this is exactly what I have warned and what so many other channels have warned as well. Is that what she does is that she finds a way to pit one side of the family against the other. And then she picks and picks and picks and picks until there's a fight, until there's people defending the dad and people over here defending the mom. And then she digs into their past, exes and former friends and former bosses. She just digs until there's discord that she can sow between the two sides. Instead of encouraging the family to set their differences aside and look for the missing person, it should be Sebastian that she is focused on. That is what the family is trying to focus on from what I can see. They don't need people like this trying to divide and conquer the family so that she can get clicks and views on her fucking YouTube channel. 
I am worried she is going after them and push Chris to do something that will get him put in jail and she will sue him. That definitely needs to, that is a warning that definitely needs to be given. I don't know who that needs to go to, but that is definitely something that she has done in the past where she has purposely shown up somewhere to try to invoke someone so that she can be like, oh my God, they touched my nose. I'm suing. And that is definitely something that she would do. And she would do it to take money because then she could take the money and, you know, sue some more people on YouTube because, you know, feels. I hope she gets arrested. Yeah, me too. For real. Um, always watching from the bushes. Thank you for, thank you. I appreciate you being here. Uh, no one ran away. Stepdad had to go back to work to keep his job. He had a mouth off. He had a mouth, a month off. Yes. And so again, that's why I posted that article in the chat earlier. That's why we went over a section of it. He had to go back to work again. I don't know why she said she's saying that they're in Mississippi. They're in Memphis, Tennessee. And the mom didn't want to be home by herself because people were threatening her like Betty. So she is passing out flyers while Chris is working. So again, agree or disagree, criticize or cheer on whatever you want about what I just said, but at least criticize what's actually happening. Um, Angie Carterman for 12 months. Thank you. I appreciate that. Appreciate you being here. They don't want anybody monitoring their movements. Why? Because they're guilty as hell. I'll, I'll help you get out. Yeah. If that family is terrible. And you know what? Katie, if you're listening, we're happy to get you away from Chris. Chris won't fuck with me. I'll tell you that. If you want to get away from him, we'll give you all the support you need to get away from that man. Wow. So now you're trying to break up a marriage. Wow. Okay. Wow. Okay. We'll give you all the support. We'll give you counseling support. We'll give you housing support. We'll give you whatever you need to get. I have a funny feeling you can take care of yourself. But I think you need to get away from Chris. Unless you want to go down in the sinking boat he created. I'd suggest you cut ties. See, I, I learned. A oh, so another bill threat. So lovely. Uh, I guess we had to make a list of them uh, at this point. What is that, like three or four so far? <sighs> uh, Brit Focus, member for 14 months. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Yes, Cheesy Wheezy. Yeah, they're in Memphis um, at a job site. Yep. Wow. Yeah, exactly, Queen of Awesome. <laughs> like your name. Yeah, it's, it's pretty crazy. This is mind-blowing. A woman who is... Suing someone for defamation is stating as fact that a woman and her husband murdered their missing kid. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, good egg. Not just that. But that because she thinks that, he should have all of his military VA benefits stripped from him and her. Because they're both apparently uh, veterans. Which, like, that's not even a thing. Long time ago, when to hold him and when to fold him. And if I was sitting in your position, I'd be out there looking for my son, son, and, and know it's time to fold. Chris is no good. Chris is a piece of shit. He's no good. And you are probably right there with him. A YouTuber suggests she cut ties with her husband. <laughs> I mean, right? Can you imagine like the narcissism that you have to have to sit up here and be like, you know what? You know what, coffee beaners? I'm just going to tell her about herself. I'm going to tell her to leave her husband and gosh darn it, she might do it. Bitch, please. If they get convicted after 60 day benefits stop. Yeah, but they shouldn't be getting any benefits now. I don't want them taking, um, selling this house, getting a several hundred thousand dollars and turning around and going getting another VA, VA loan. I don't want them doing that. They don't deserve a VA loan. They don't deserve any benefits from the VA. They're are you jealous that they can get a house with no down payment? You self-serving moron. They earned that. They already earned that benefit. That is the government's end of the contract to fulfill the contract. 
Wow. You're pretty reckless today, buddy. That's reckless. Your child is missing and they're hiding away like cowards. So let me get this straight. So if your child goes missing, the government should be able to just swoop in, throw you in jail and take all your military benefits away. <laughs> wow, Betty, do you know what you're advocating for there for, for that? Like, do you understand what that means? I know it's hard. Thinking is difficult, but just kind of follow through. You are essentially, I, I just, I can't. Wow. Uh, his payments would stop on the 61st day after a convention, a uh, conviction only. That is correct. If he is convicted, it will stop. But if he's not, and the police are saying he's cooperating, and there's no evidence that even makes him a person of interest, much less a suspect, um, for her to say this is fucking crazy. And let me just say this. If he is the person who did it, and if he is convicted, then it's the government's job. It's the VA. They will handle it. They will take it away after he's in prison and convicted. They will take it away. It is not your fucking business. Betty, it's not your business. And they're military. I bet you they didn't even fight for us. Betty. Wow. Um, if they're in the U.S. military, who the fuck would they be... Like, Wow. Your mother failed you because this, you are a fucking embarrassment. She was probably here over here. I, I, I'd like to know where you went, Katie. Katie and Chris, where did you serve? How many years did you serve? I want to know. My uncle served 30 years. So you have some random uncle that you're just now bringing up. Bitch, you not understand that you just disrespected him by saying all this shit? What the fuck? I don't know, Mike. I don't know if it was, um, I'll, but they do. Sergeant, I know that because I went and pulled their mortgage stuff. They had 100% financing. Oh, oh, wait, 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 wait a second now. Wait a second. So, <laughs> so if somebody pulled your mortgage, you'd be like, that's going real life. I'm being harassed and stalked. I'm suing. But now you're pulling other people's mortgage paperwork. And bitching that they got a VA loan, which side note for those that are new, I find pretty rich coming from Betty, who, if you don't know, back during the housing crisis, she, well, where she worked, got raided by the feds and she was listed in a conclusion of, it was something kind of, it was a, um, a court document, but in the conclusion section, she was named by name as being part of the problem where she was falsifying tax documents and um, W-2s. So she was actively part of the shit that went down that caused the housing crisis back then. I did a whole stream about it. So I find it real rich that here she is shitting on military people that fucking earned that VA. And she thinks that they should just get it taken away from them. Let me tell you something, Betty. Okay. That VA loan comes from the government, not a bank. The reason why a bank is more likely to accept a VA loan than anything else is because it's guaranteed. If something were to happen and say, Chris, or Katie couldn't pay the mortgage, they know that no matter what, the government's going to pay it off. 
They don't have to worry about going through years and years of court to try to skim off the top to at least get something to, you know, make it worth their while to complain about. No, the VA, it's guaranteed money. That's why a lot of people who are in the military use that fucking VA because not only is the bank's going to more likely to accept it, like the underwriters when you're trying to buy a house, but also you can basically get a house with no down payment. Guess what, Betty? They fucking earned it. They signed up and signed their body, their person, over to serve the military. As a volunteer, they were not drafted. They did it as a volunteer and they served their four years or their eight years or whatever the fuck they served. And as the, the reward of what they earned, the government gives them things like a VA loan. There's, there's only very few hundred percent financing out there and one's HUD and the other's VA. And if I pull their mortgage, I guarantee it's going to say VA on it. So they're, they're getting the benefits. They're getting the benefits. As they should. People went out to Mississippi and there ain't no flyer. No, no, there's no flyers. They lied to the whole world. They're not in Mississippi. <laughs> They're not in Mississippi, dummy. So if somebody went to some random person in Mississippi and didn't see flyers, it's probably because they're not in Mississippi. Christopher and Katie Proudfoot <laughs> need to be under an investigation. As a matter of fact, they need to be in jail oh. until this stuff is sorted out. Oh, right. So uh, so now we're advocating for violating human rights. So fuck the idea that she's a victim's rights advocate. Oh, no. Now she's advocating. Listen to what she's saying. She's saying that people should just be put in jail indefinitely without charges, without a conviction, without any fucking evidence at all. Just put them in jail until they figure out what happened and who done it. <laughs> Bitch, <laughs> you were so dumb. Oh my God. I'm sorry. They're missing a child. They can't tell you where the child is. Wait, 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 wait. So now you're... So if you have a missing child, you should automatically be put in jail until they figure out what happened? <laughs> what? <laughs> what the fuck? Oh, Betty, I'm... I'm mm. Aren't you glad, Betty? That's not how this country works. Wow. that That's just like... That doesn't even... Even if those in charge decided to do that, that is so unrealistic. That is divorced from reality to even be able to enforce that. Do you know how many people go missing in this country every day, every hour? It's heartbreaking and it's a lot. You can't just throw everybody in jail because you fucking get overly emotional about a case involving people that's none of your fucking business. Like, you don't know these people. You're not from their community. What the fuck's the matter with you? So if somebody goes, if a kid goes missing next door to you, Betty, should we just throw you in jail just for the hell of it? What the fuck? So I'm glad my edible's kicking in. <laughs> I mean, right. You kind of almost have to have one. Oh, wait, someone not in Mississippi didn't post flyers in Mississippi? I know. Mind blown. <laughs> My God. Someone checked in Mississippi and saw no flyers, dot, dot, dot. Okay. The state of Mississippi is like 50,000 square foot miles, right? Shh. But it was somebody in her chat that gives her money. It must be true. Their story doesn't make sense and they're running away from home. We have her, you can detain them for 48 hours. Why have they not done any forensic? Why would they let them go? I don't care. I don't care. I, I don't like Tennessee law enforcement. So if it's not an easy case, it doesn't get solved. Administrative desk. Chris was administrative desk. I knew it. I knew it. He's a pussy. 
Wow. So you're calling a veteran a pussy because one of your morons in your chat told you, oh, I think he was sitting at a desk. Do you not understand that a lot of what is fought in 2024 is in front of a computer? You do realize that, Betty. Yes, there are still people that go overseas, but there's a lot of military that sit at a desk and serve this country equally so. Wow. It's called things like the internet and computers. Um, the Immortal, thank you so much. I don't know, Toast, that sounds like someone who might know something about missing people would say, step into my cell for a second, will you? <laughs> right? Oh, my God. Did they check Georgia? <laughs> Did they check Florida? Why are there no signs there? Oh, my. Yeah, like they are like there's certain branches that hire people or that. Right. I just I don't even know where to begin. But like the the idea that someone who is working behind a desk is a pussy. Betty, I'm sorry. Uh, when did you serve? That's right. You didn't. Do you even have a job? That's right. You don't. So uh, if somebody is a pussy because they work at a desk in front of a computer, what does that make you when you don't have a job at all? Even if they find for Sebastian, it's going to be hard to prove who. Oh, no, I don't think it would be uh, Foghorn. I really don't. If they find Sebastian, I think at that point, the people are going to be arrested. They are so worried about Seth and his GoFundMe, but he's looking for his son and gave up his job. Yeah. Right. So just to remind everyone, um, this person, Andra Griffin from Manatee County, Florida, who wants to advocate for veteran benefits, is saying that you're a pussy if you weren't right on the front lines. Just want to point that out. She's not, was an electrician. She is an electrician. I bet you I got more electrical work than she does, electrical experience than she does. I've been oh. riding on a truck since I was two years old. Oh, right. Because at two years old, that's where the training begins. Right? This is like, is this now a competition, Betty? Are you jealous because Katie is allegedly an electrician, it sounds like? What the fuck is even happening right now? I knew how to say channel lock before I said daddy. <laughs> I'm X, just joking. X for doubt on that. I feel bad for Seth. But you know what, guys? Listen, we're going to be out there in Tennessee come, come hell or high water. My mom told me I could borrow the car if I don't get my car back. And Aww. Oh, you have to borrow your car from your mommy. Wow. It's like... Why can't you use your car? Why can't you get a job and get a rental car and, and a plane ticket or something, right? You gotta borrow your mommy's car while you're claiming that veterans are pussies. Got it. Time. I'm gonna be leaving. Hopefully I'll leave here early um, or late Thursday. I'll get there midday on Friday and I'll stay there and be ready for Saturday. I'll go poke around and, and you know, my little places that I got on my map that I wanted to check out anyways. Um, but that's kind of where I'm going to be right now. And then, of course, I'll be back by Sunday or Monday back home front. Because I'm only literally going up there for a day and coming, turning around and coming back. And I'm, it's like a 13-hour drive for me. Great one. Thank you so much. Thank you for all who, all those who served our country. Thank you. Yes, I agree with that. Thank you so much. So I figured if I can do 13 hours for this boy, if you guys are closer, maybe you guys would be willing to drive as well. Is she having a stroke? She's literally only talking out of one side of her mouth. You know what? I've had so many people send me screenshots of her lately. <laughs> and I, I don't know what to make of it. I've had some people tell me that it looks like, you know, she's, you know, hitting that sauce again. Other people are telling me that it could be something else. I, I don't know. But I noticed that there are some times where it's really bad it kind of droops really, really bad. And there's other times where it's like you almost can't notice it at all.
them as but the it's one that one. found it. You know, this is what I talk about. Everybody, everybody sits there and criticizes until they, they, they start understanding why we do the things that we do. You will never find anything sitting at home. Okay. Being on, on this side, being where I am right now is never going to help anything. It's never going to help a person. It's not going to solve a case. Okay. Um, wow. <laughs> you're, you're not supposed to be solving cases, Betty. That's, that's for the investigators to do. The investigators, law enforcement, people who are trained, who know what the fuck they're doing, so they don't fuck up the case later for the family. They're the ones that are solving cases. It is not some random YouTuber's job to solve these cases. See, right there, you are already in the wrong mindset. If you want to advocate, great. If you want to bring awareness, fantastic. But you, your job is not to solve it. It is not. You don't have the authority. You don't have the education. You don't have the permission. Because in this case, law enforcement has said to stop. They said don't show up unless you're with that group that is making sure that it's organized and making sure that people are not going by themselves so they don't get hurt. There's a lot of reasons why they're saying the things that they're saying. And you are not entitled to all of those answers. Curse Charlotte Luke, thank you so much. I work for the government, never had the pleasure to sure, but this, oh, to suit. Um, I think you mean to serve, but this stream made me nauseous. She has no respect for people who dedicate so much for us. Fuck you, BHB. I agree. 100% agree. And it's, it's so shitty that she's going to now act like some advocate for veterans benefits. No, that will not happen. It's not going to help bring in leads. It's not going to do anything for me. OK, um, being out there and in the woods, you're never going to find something unless you're physically looking for it. It's just it, it's never going to happen. And sometimes you find stuff when you're not looking for it. And when you're just out there searching, you stumble across stuff all the time. You, you'd you be amazed. And a lot of people are even, you know, even when I'm out there advocating for a case physically there with my camera and everything, not searching. Now, again, that's not advocation. You showing up in live streaming and making money bitching about a school or a stepdad or law enforcement or whatever the fuck, that is not avocation. That's somebody live streaming. That's not avocation. Uh, but advocating for, you will never believe how many people will just literally walk up to you and start telling you information that you've never heard before. And they can corroborate it literally right there on the spot. It is, it's a, a, just a different way of getting information. It's an, e for me, it's easier. Like I can sit out in front of, in front of a road and people know where I am and literally get uh, the whole life story of the victim and the family in 15 or 20 minutes. Again, how is that helping the family get justice later down the road? It doesn't. In fact, it will. It potentially could hurt because you are running around trying to interview potential witnesses. You are handing options for the future defense attorney on a silver platter. That is not helping the family. And you're right. Somebody who said that she never wants to work with real searchers because they would background check her and she's on the domestic violence registry three times. She knows they won't allow her to work with them. Probably so. I don't know. Well, if they're not going to let her work, then she needs to keep her ass home. So it's just as simple as that. She either needs to do it the right way and work with actual searchers and follow their instructions, swallow her pride, put the fucking phone away and actually help. And if they won't let her, then she needs to stay out the fucking way so that people that are actually helping can actually do something. 
versus sitting here at home and it taking me literally eight to 16 hours to acquire the same amount of information. You know, we're just looking for anything. I really don't think they're Sebastian's. I, I, I agree. I don't, I don't know whether they are or not. I, cause I'm not there, but if they are, man, that really does change the direction of this case, doesn't it? It really would change the direction of this case. They were found Gallatin. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Thank you, Glenda. They said no YouTubers or TikTokers. They said, if you want to help, great. Fantastic. Sign up to help and follow the process. They do not want people showing up streaming. Period. They're very clear about that. They gave the address. I looked at the map to see it. But you know, the, the one thing that I noticed about that, the one thing that I noticed about that is the fact that, um, I just lost my thought. Oh, Gallatin, is that it was in the wrong direction. That's it. Is that it's not toward Memphis. It's not toward uh, Clarksville. It's not toward any place that, that Sebastian would have gone to. Right. So what she's uh, blathering about now is something that was debunked like before her live even started. Again, she could have looked it up, but she chose not to. Uh, Janice in accounting. Thank you so much. It's clear BHB is a fascist. When people tell you who they are, believe them. You're the best host. Thank you. I actually tend to agree. Because the stuff that she advocates, whether it's children, vets, justice system, crime statistics, education, I could go down the list. All the things that she ends up screaming the loudest that she advocates for is tyranny. It's either a monarch and or tyranny. That is what she says that she believes, even though she'll claim, oh, no, I'm I'm not that. I believe something else. No, the things that she advocates for is tyranny. What else would you describe locking innocent people up in jail indefinitely without evidence, without a trial? No, nothing. Just put them in jail indefinitely until they found a missing person. I, I, something tells me... <laughs> If Betty was the one being put in jail indefinitely against her rights, she would have something to say about it. Does she have hashtags on the stream you are reviewing? Oh, she tags stuffs every stream. Every single stream. <laughs> you can go to her channel and see it for yourself. It's hashtags, it's paragraphs of hashtags. And she used to be worse until either it was either YouTube told her to knock it off or she read the writing on the roll and was like, mm, maybe I should calm it down. But she still does a lot of tax stuffing. It's it's a lot. I heard JLR put a tracking on their car and he and Betts are little stalkers, if true. I did not hear that. That's I hope that's not the case. Wow, that's fucked up if true i don't think he liked his grandparents just like i don't think he liked chris i think i think katie should have been a real mom and left chris when she realized chris didn't like her son instead of trying to to sell her son back to his dad so they can go and have their shitty lifestyle where they're going to get a divorce anyways you want to know how i know the ending of this one because the man's been married five times Betty, did you just fucking accuse Katie of selling her kid? Okay, I'm going to back that up a little bit. Um, what? It's not toward any place that, that Sebastian would have gone to. I don't think he liked his grandparents, just like I don't think he liked Chris. I think, I think Katie should have been a real mom and left Chris when she realized Chris didn't like her son instead of trying to, to sell her son back to his dad so they can go and have their shitty lifestyle where they're going to get a divorce anyways. You want to know how I know the ending of this one? Because the man's been married five times. He doesn't know how to stay committed. He doesn't have integrity. He's a piece of garbage. You know, <sighs> Betty, for someone 
who says that people should not attack your personal life. I'm just, I'm just saying you are being absolutely wild with this shit. <laughs> I really hope that they sue you at this point. Like what the fuck? I know he's a piece of garbage because he's been married five times. Now, granted, if he was married five times in his twenties, I can understand that people change over time, right? Over time you, you learn. So for the people like my, my, my stepmom, uh, not my stepmom, my, um, mother-in-law. Okay, for example, Vince's mom married. I think she was married six times. So, but in all fairness, three of her husbands died. I mean, <laughs> over share much? Like, what does it have to do with Sebastian? And why are you telling your former mother in law's business out there like that? That was none of anyone's business. Oh my God. And she's not a black widow. They died of health, you know, natural health is, I think, well, one of them died um, from the kidney failure that was clawed. Remember I told you about that? He had an aneurysm. And so doctors had put him on all this medicine to thin his blood. So his aneurysm in his brain. What the fuck? I, th that's like, none of this is anyone's business. But since you put it out there, guess what? I guess people have a right to criticize it now. Way to go, Betty. Like, what are you doing right now? I just, I don't understand. Like I've, I've never been divorced, so I can't speak from experience, but to say that someone is a piece of shit because they've been divorced, uh, Betty, you were also divorced. <laughs> like, why would you say that? But all the medication that they, they were making him that to sustain him on killed his liver and his kidneys. So he never died from the, um, aneurysm in his brain he died from kidney and liver failure um so i mean they're, they're, one of them had a heart attack and i think the other one she was married two or three different times to him so how does betty know how does betty know what the circumstances are for his marriages she doesn't um the only one that i think that she knows somewhat about is she i mean People started going to real life on Chris, started digging up all his exes. And one of his exes, who is currently in, I'm under the impression that it's some, it's some kind of court case. I don't know if it's like a custody battle or something. It's very contentious from what I've heard. And the woman it went live, like was like on somebody's stream and like gave this big like recorded video of her side. And it was just, it's just, it's messy as hell. It has nothing to do with the case, nothing to do with Sebastian. Again, it's like, who cares? I just, I don't understand. Calcifer, thank you so much. Welcome to the dumpster fire. I appreciate that. Um, it's none of our, it's, it's real, exactly. It's none of our business. And if we, st again, this is one of those things. If we start saying that people are now guilty of unaliving people because they have been divorced five times or because they have an ex whatever that doesn't like them. Like that is a dangerous road to go down. Like, <laughs> like, I'm sorry, but no, that this is not something that a victim's advocate should be saying. One guy got three, three marriages out of it. So, you know, I mean, so there are people out there that have a multiple, multiple really, but there's no violence. You don't have this story of oh. uh, being, you know, where, where children and, and, and women are being brutalized in a house. Oh, what about husbands being brutalized in a house? Betty, I'm telling you, you are not the one to be saying this. We've all seen your record. You're on that registry three times in your state. We're putting your hands on your partner. Stop it. Um, that's the, the story we're getting from Chris. And and it coupled with him being married five times. Trust me, he's not going to have a good relationship. He's not going to be able to stay married. I don't know. Some some people just need to be alone, you know? Wow. A uh, projection much? Listen, if Katie and Chris are happy in their marriage, leave them the fuck alone. That is their business to decide whatever they do in their marriage like if they are if they're fine then why is it your business why are you trying to break the the marriage up 
I'll tell you because I know the answer. She wants Katie to leave Chris so that she can be like, I was right. I win. I win the game. I was right. I said it first. And then she'll interview Katie and then interview. Like she'll she'll turn that into another grift. That's what she's wanting. Oh, she's on there five times. Well, wow. not surprising. I think CP constantly had problems with Sebastian and caused KP to stop caring about her son. I don't know. I think she's a piece of shit. I think Katie Proudfoot is a, a real piece of shit mother. And what happens in the end if you find out, Betty, Andra, that the mom had no guilt, that the mom didn't do anything wrong? What are you going to do? Because you can't take any of these words back. The stuff that you're saying right now is crazy. Like you're, you're reckless on a regular basis anyway. Okay. But like this, this is like further than you normally go. And it's so early in the case too. There, there's just so many question marks right now. Who knows what they're going to find an hour from now, a day from now, a year from now. I hope it doesn't last that long. God forbid, but it's so early. Nobody knows anything. <laughs> the, the search is still happening. And you're going to say all this. What happens if you were wrong, Betty? What are you going to do? And I, and you know what, if she's, she knows about this, I don't care if she had any part in it or not. If she knows anything about it, I can't wait to hear those. I, I can't wait for her to hear that cage slam behind her. You should show Andrew's rap sheet to remind everyone. Yeah, I did a whole entire live stream, uh, like, uh, over a year ago, whole live stream, just reading out the police affidavits about her reckless behavior, her disgusting behavior over the course of like age 17 to like 2017. I did a whole live stream about it. I wish them uh, pieces of crap would tell. Yeah. This idea that, that we, we believe they're crap at this point. No, we don't. You ran away from home, not once, but twice. Lady, just stay gone. You're a waste of space. And so is that piece of shit husband. You're telling Sebastian's mother that she is a waste of space. You are being hella disrespectful to Sebastian by attacking his parents like that. I would ask what the fuck's wrong with you, but I kind of already have my theories. She will delete this and pretend she never said it and claim she supported the mom the whole time. Yeah, that's probably what she will do. If it turns out that the mom really didn't have anything to do with it, she will more than likely do that, which is why there's channels like mine and channels like so many others. We clip the shit, we review the shit, and then she gets mad because all of a sudden there's proof that she actually did say it. She's not able to lie. She will, but she'll get caught. It won't matter if she is wrong. She will either say that Ellie is wrong or she will just say the woman still a piece of shit and should have been a better mom and this would have never happened to her son. Yeah, she'll probably say that. Yeah, that sounds like stuff that she has said in the past in other cases. And you ask her if somebody were to ever say that to her, she'd probably sue them for emotional distress <laughs> and claim that she was being harassed and cyber bullied. But she says this to someone else and expects people to just like take it and not say anything back. Okay. And I'm going to tell you, like I told uh, Lilani Simon and her mother, look around at everything you got because it's about to be gone. You can sell your house. Think you're collecting this money or that money. I have a funny feeling they're selling their house because they know Chris Proudfoot's going to have to get an attorney. Again, they're not selling their house. She's just lying right now. They need some liquid cash. 
Katie likes Sebastian SSDI check. That's what it's sounding like. She seemed like she was a caring. Mothers don't have, you know, sons and care for them and have clean houses and six hundred and fifty thousand dollar homes. Um, just to unalive their sons. So something has happened over the years. But you know what? We have to look at Ruby Frankie, right? Ruby Frankie is another one, lived in a huge house and abused her children. Um, also, I'm not exactly sure if she or the person she was, the comment she was reading was alluding that somehow a VA disability check equates to welfare. It is not welfare. So, and it is, it is it's completely different than a types of welfare. So I don't know if that's where she was going with that, but I do want to clear that up as well. I don't know if any of this will ever stop. I really don't. All right, guys. Well, I love you. That Abuse is not determined by socioeconomic status. Uh, right. But you notice how she keeps bringing up the fact that they live in a big, nice house or what she would consider an expensive house. Notice that? <laughs> she sounds kind of jealous. That was kind of my commentary for today. So we're, uh, we're not for the day. I'll be back. Um, you know, we'll do a more uh, formal live later today. But I didn't want you guys thinking. I feel like I'm, 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 I'm not, I'm trying to do so much. Plus I have the court hearing coming up and it's just. Mm, can't wait. It's been, I, my time's been really, really, really short. And I, I don't want you guys feeling like I'm abandoning you because I'm not abandoning you. I love you guys. And I want you guys to know that you guys are my babies. How can she say I love you after that? Um, narcissism. This is typical narcissistic behavior. Says all of that shit. Even disrespecting the vets in her own chat by saying all that. And then it's like, thank you, love you, you're my babies. That's narcissistic behavior. And uh, so I decided just to do an impromptu live, something just right from here. I'd rather do, I'd rather, I'd rather come from here than not do one at all, you know? And I'm sorry for uh, all the trolls that were in here. I really do hope that people grow up um, on the streets of YouTube. Like we don't have these problems on TikTok. We don't have these problems on Instagram. We don't have these problems on Twitter. The only time we have these problems is here on YouTube. And, you know, we all have to be here. We might as well get along. And not only that, but if nobody's doing that to you, why are you doing it to other people? I mean, I could ask you that same question why you just said all that shit like like this entire time. Wow. It just seems pretty shitty. It just seems pretty shitty. And if you're having a really crappy day and you're doing this and your life is miserable, you're probably making your own life miserable. You <laughs> you just said earlier in this live stream that your life is miserable and sad. <laughs> you you just admitted that you're unhappy. <laughs> Take your own advice. Uh, I've never trolled Betty's chat. I should add it to my to-do list. I mean, I have never even commented on her channel ever. But she always seems to blame me for all of these trolls. You know, I mean... There's people in my chat that wake up every day very, very, very happy. And everybody can wake up every day very, very, very happy. So don't forget to be fearless. If you see something, say something. Now it's a prevention's worth a pound of cure. And until next time, <laughs> please be safe and kind to one another. Yeah, be kind, guys. Only I get to be a psycho to veterans. But guys, be kind. <laughs> like, what the hell? Pretty simple stuff. But we still have jackasses out there. So don't be a jackass and don't be a Richard. God bless. So original. So that was our life. And let's see. Close that. I think I will go ahead and show the... Do I have the screenshot still? Oh, shoot. Did I already close it? Oh, no. Here it is. Here is the link to the article that I was reading from earlier. They did not move to Mississippi. They did not move. They were not selling their house. Chris apparently had a job that he had a construction job for a couple of weeks in Memphis, three hours away from their home. She decided to go with him and pass out flyers instead of being home by herself. She said that they were getting uh, threats 
unaliving threats and people were driving past their house all hours of the day and night. So again, like I said, if you have an issue with them getting in an RV and driving to his work site, then criticize that by all means. But don't bitch about something that never happened. I, I exactly <laughs> right. And I I'm and get this. So like if he didn't go to the job that he had already agreed to do, and he lost his job, and they then couldn't pay their bills and lost their house because they couldn't pay their mortgage. They couldn't pay that mortgage that VA helped them get. Betty would criticize them for not working. So for her, you really, there's no winners here. So if they go to a job, she'll criticize them for working. And if they don't work and lose their house over it, she will say that, you know, they should have went to their job. So, right. And on top of that, like, who cares? You know, like, uh, so they, they eat dinner with family and that's supposed to be guilt. Like the things that she's reaching here is astounding. Like it is just such a reach. Again, if they are involved in the craziness, if there is foul play here, the evidence will come out. They'll get outed. They will get arrested. They will go to court. They will have their day in court. And if they get evict convicted, great, fine, put them in prison, whatever, whatever the judge decides. But for her to sit up here so early where there's no evidence of anything and they're fully cooperating, to me, in my opinion, it just seems like she picked that quote side because <clears throat> she's trying to divide them from the bio biological father. She sees a divide there. And again, instead of encouraging for the family to set aside their differences and work together to find S Sebastian, and then they can hash out their differences later after everything is taken care of, fine. But she sees that weakness there. And this is what she does in every single case, every single case, she does this. She will take advantage of one side of the family that is maybe gullible or super stressed and, and not really understanding the gravity of the circumstances when it comes to getting involved with all these YouTubers and then decides to go against the other side of the family that maybe is more outspoken or she doesn't like that they got divorced, whatever. Like, it's so dumb. Like, she will find something to complain about. And so again, I would just encourage people to not encourage discourse and divide in a family. You should be focused on Sebastian and not what is or could be dividing that family. And just period. You need to set aside whatever your feelings are about whatever family member you don't like. You need to you need to check that at the door and focus on Sebastian. That is my opinion. That is my advice to anyone who decides to review that case or whatever. But I just I don't. The things that she was saying about military veterans is so fucked up, and there was no way that I wasn't gonna, you know call that out. So anyway, guys, um, I will let you go. That's all I have for you tonight. I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. Thank you for being here. I really appreciate it. Thank you to all the veterans out there. I come from a military family. My husband comes from a military family. My husband is a veteran. So yeah, I, she just doesn't know what she's talking about. And I have to say, um, no, nah. I'll say that for another, another stream, but yes, she doesn't know what she's talking about and uh, shame on her for saying that somebody should have their VA benefits stripped from them because she thinks they're guilty of a crime that police are not even sure even occurred yet. So anyway, I will play you guys out. You guys have a great weekend and I will see you on Monday later. Yeah!
This is to me. Your toast, buddy! Burnt toast. You will know that Native Americans hey. probably make the best ranch you will ever have in your entire existence. Burnt toast. Mm. Yeah, I've been wanted to burnt toast. So now, so that burnt toast is joining in this f***ing crowd now? Why are they so real tonight? Come on, 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 with the signs, you know, sign the rules that you know. Or Indian BS, I'm not sure. I'm wearing a tinfoil hat, which I recommend. I know what everything about power is about. And then you call it and tell us that fun. Hot damn. I did see Bart Tows in there. I'm gonna be pissed! Let me be fucking pissed! I don't need therapy! I wouldn't be surprised if cops were racist. Shanty fam for life! Yay, you guys! Why, yo, yo! Give him a name to remember! This is the kind of fun shit we get to do. Let's see how you do under pressure! Let's see how you do under pressure! A moment can live on forever! Let's see how you do under pressure! What of you two? Literally based in rain. <laughs> I listened to toast last night. You know, a methodical toast. I feel like a savage.